Dr. Monica is finally here, and she does not have much time. So can we welcome her uh, in the name of Jesus? Dr. Monica is my honorable minister in charge of health in the National Fresh for Born Again Pentecostal Churches of Uganda. As you already are aware, she was, she's also in charge of our household economic transformation initiative, Haiti, concerned. We received the uh, promise from the government, which has delayed until now, but she's already started doing some work in eastern Uganda. She's been doing a wonderful work, but we don't know talk about that. We are still waiting for government to release the funding. However, in the midst of all this, coronavirus issue because of her history in fighting Ebola in Uganda way back, which year was that? 2007. She did it so successfully that uh, Sierra Leone and other Western nations... Oh, you mean West Africa? Uh, yeah. yeah. 2007. She, uh, Uganda was asked to help and she was the one who was sent as the specialist in epidemiology. <laughs> that one. <laughs> 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 the epidemiologist who went as a expert because of our history, she went and performed excellently. So her name is now a household name in Western countries, WHO. Another nation, she's just come back from Rwanda recently, and then DRC. You want to DRC for some? DRC. Okay, so she's been in this issue. Uh, so recently, when the coronavirus hit, the president has also appointed her a few days ago, last Saturday, last Friday, appointed the presidential advisor. Before that, we had in the Interreligious Council, I appointed Simon Peter Emiao on the board of the Interreligious Council. I appointed her to represent Napechu in IRSCU as our Minister for Public Affairs, and, they went and, and then another lady for on, on other issues, the National Guard. But immediately they saw her name, all the others, council presidents, the board, they said, uh, since we have uh, Dr. Monica Musenero, she's going to head our IRCU public health department. So she you can see how many appointments now she's involved in. So now, let us welcome Dr. Monica Musenero. Questions you have, ideas you have.
this virus is a prophetic say for a prophetic position nothing has reorganized the world globally like this virus i don't know if you are seeing it you see it, you see these things in the spirit beyond just us nothing has ever reorganized the world order the way this virus is doing look at these countries italy france south korea china usa uk netherlands sweden switzerland don't you see that this these are countries where if their people come, we don't want them. Now, you can look at it superficially, but you can look at it with a spiritual eye. The world has been going in a certain way that it seemed impossible to stop the mighty. We don't have a lot of people who are following you. If we can pick this and raise up, the church's position is going to change and we will install ourselves to guide the nation and take over things and let the kingdom of God come. Amen. So that the way things take off is going to be totally different. Now let me go back to the technical things. Um, I know you have all heard about this virus for a while. I don't know how many questions you have, and I don't know how much you have understood what this is and what it means. So, in our physical scientific world, this is a virus. Viruses are very small organisms, very, very small. Even with a normal microscope, we don't see them. They are very, they look very simple because they have only two parts. They have their genetic material and a very simple coat around them. But yet they can wreak havoc. They can wreak havoc. Now for me, um, my guiding class has always been between and between and between. As I passed at the marketplace. I don't I can't pass the church. If I do, nobody will follow me. <laughs> no, everybody will go away, I'm telling you, because I, I, I just feel very sorry and respect for pastors that you are able to tolerate us <laughs> and live with our things you live with that. So this virus is very, very small. It's called Corona, not because of the Corona car. But when you look at it under the electronic microscope, it is a very, very powerful microscope. It looks, it has things on its surface which look like a crown. It makes, it looks like the crown of the king. So it comes from the Latin word related to coronation. That is the name. And this is not the first one. Coronaviruses have been known for a long, long time. They are very, very many. Uh, some cause problems with the uh, digestive tract, especially in children. And the majority cause challenges with the respiratory tract. Uh, the coronaviruses have their hosts. So there is a coronavirus for insects, there is one for birds, the number of them for rats, the number of them, which are every different animal. Usually, they do not cross from one animal to another. Because for a virus to live with uh, a particular animal, they reach an agreement. Allow me to stay here. I will not kill you. Mm -hmm. So they, that, they grow together for a while. And they come to that agreement. So the immune system does not get rid of the virus. But the virus also does not harm the host. And this is how they move. Now, from time to time, something goes wrong. Because viruses are very small, their ability to continue depends on their ability to keep on producing. So as they are producing new ones, errors come. 
from their genetic materials they are trying to replicate. You can say industrial defects, <laughs> as they are trying to produce more copies of themselves. Now those ones which are faulty could either start to kill that very host they were living with, or it can acquire ability to go to a different species of host. So it could acquire, for example, in bats, it could acquire to go to rats. Now, it doesn't have an agreement with the rats. Hmm? It doesn't have an agreement with the rats. So when it reaches there, the rat is, who are you? And they start fighting. And usually because it also doesn't know how to live there, it may. So two things will happen. Either the virus will die out because it cannot grow there, or it will kill the rats. It will start killing the rats. So these processes are always going on. I'm explaining this because we have a lot of conspiracy theories. These processes are always going on, always going on in all the different viruses. So when you trace most of the viruses we have now, they had an origin. Ebola virus was there for very, it has been there for a very long time in the wild, and it's still there. But when it crosses from its natural host, which is the bat, and it gets into primates, or any other animal. They don't have an agreement. So the virus grows, they start to fight, it kills that animal, even the human beings. So because of that processes, we have had coronaviruses continuously changing, changing, and getting ability to infect other animals. In um, around 2003, one coronavirus changed. It emerged from the wild animals, acquired that ability to grow in the human being, and it was infecting the lungs, causing its severe pneumonia. And it started also in China. You know, China, they eat a lot, they rear a lot of animals for the casino purposes. They're all weird, weird types of animals. They eat them and they eat them, and they, so it is easier for a virus to do what? To cross the man being. So in 2003, we had one. And because it caused a severe, acute respiratory syndrome, they called it SARS. SARS is S for severe, A for acute, R for respiratory, affects your breathing system, and S, you know, SARS. They are acute respiratory syndrome. Now that virus started from China and it spread very fast because by 2003 this mass travel where you know people are traveling all over the world had started, China had opened up before it was very difficult to go in China. If we remember the politics. Before that it has been very it has been, but China has now started emerging and opening up, having a lot of American industries take their factories there. So because of that, the interconnected in the Soviet world came. And this disease moved very fast. Now it was identified to be a coronavirus. We had changed and had acquired the ability to infect and multiply the human being. But because it was infecting lungs, deep in the lungs, its transmission to other people was not as efficient, but it was still infecting them. Uh, the world responded in a very big way. Even the World Health Organization changed the guidelines, the international health regulations. They changed because of that, because of the way the disease came. And it usually moved along the routes, went to US, went to Canada, you know, where there was a lot of connectedness with China then. Then we did not have a lot of connectedness with China. So that virus is now named SARS-CoV-1. That means the SARS coronavirus 1. Now before I, I forgot to mention that normally 
in the normal situation, coronavirus is a response of about 30% of the flu that you have. You usually have flu and you know, most of those flus. So we have many, many coronaviruses around us. But they don't usually cause severe disease. They don't sneeze and then it will go. You have all suffered from flu. Maybe some people say they are resistant. <laughs> and there are some people who may be resistant. But they are around and they've never caused us any problems. So after 2003, the virus went quiet. The world went, they researched, they produced vaccines, they produced food. That virus has never been seen. It was not seen in human beings again since then. Until last year. When in that same city, Wuhan in China, people started dying. And they didn't know what it was. They tested, they thought it was the SARS CoV 1. So the, all the testing focused on that. Nothing. Until eventually it was discovered that there was a virus, but it was different. And further analysis showed us it was a coronavirus, but it was it looked like a, a great grand chain of the other one. So it has been devising ways of how to infect more human beings. These viruses are very clever. Sometimes I think they are spiritual beings. <laughs> they want to survive. <laughs> so they devise all ways of making sure they are around. For example, Ebola. Ebola has to come and kill everybody. Come and kill everybody. Now, it is becoming um, like it's a sexually transmitted disease. Because when people recover, before we knew that when you recover, you don't have any virus. But now, from West Africa, we realize that people can recover, but the virus remains in the sexual organs. That's for Ebola. And once, when, as long as it is there, for you who got infected, in the women, it's in the breasts, it's in the milk. It can be there at least, up to now, there are people from West Africa, there are people with that virus. So these viruses keep on trying to coexist, and the most successful way to survive is to become a sexually transmitted disease. So um, this, this virus was named SARS, to the new virus. It also causes a severe acute respiratory syndrome, but it's not like the first one. Okay. It's a coronavirus, but it is the second version of that SARS. So it is called the virus itself is called SARS CoV 2. Now the disease it causes is called COVID-19. So COVID-19 is the name of that disease. SARS-CoV-2. SARS-CoV-2. So this that's the name of the particle, the name of the virus. And it causes, the disease it causes, it's called COVID, Corona Virus Disease of 2019. So the 19 is coming from the year when the disease was first detected. So I want you to go and speak like a wise man. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's why we are listening. Take note. Take note. Take note. Take note. COVID is the disease, and it is Corona Virus Disease of 2019. These names help us to address these things backwards when we need to relate. So that's why. So COVID is the disease. SARS-CoV-2 is the virus. Okay, like HIV is the virus. AIDS is the disease. Yes. So let's understand that. Now, 
This virus emerged, and it is not only, it has some difference, enough difference from SARS-CoV-1 that they needed to develop a new way of diagnosing it. Secondly, the vaccines that had been developed for SARS-CoV-1 do not work. The immune response is different. So it managed to change itself somewhere, such that even the people who are infected in the first one can get infected in this one. So the vaccines that had been developed, the medicines that had been developed for SARS-CoV-1 in waiting, because after that first one, we're expecting this to happen. So there has been a lot of research, but we expected something similar. But now this one came out different. We call that antigenic. We don't have to remember that, but antigenically <laughs> different. The antigen is that part which your body recognizes, and then it can quickly fight, fight back. But they are different. So when this one comes, the other one doesn't. The guns or whatever you had prepared. For the no other one can need to explain that. Mm. Antigenic meaning that you know you develop the antigens for the first one. Yes. Now, that. when why are you protected? If many of you knew what I know, you would not get out of your homes <laughs> because there are things waiting there to do what to kill you. Mm. Even here, if we brought a microscope, many of you would go in tanks. <laughs> but now on all these pathogens, the way God designed us, for me when I read that verse, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I thank God for understanding science. I go deep because I, I worship God because I know it is so sophisticated. So, so sophisticated. We are so fearfully and wonderfully made. Even here, there are many things that could kill you. But God put systems in your body, mechanisms, that protect you in every and every situation. So when these uh, viruses or germs come, on their surface, I told you it has inside it the DNA, and then on the surface it has a coat. So it's like me, inside is my body, but then I am dressed. So on that surface, it has some particles we call proteins. Now the proteins, once they enter your body, your body will immediately recognize that this is not part of you. And there is a mechanism, very sophisticated, involving millions of interactions that within seven days will produce soldiers in your body to fight it. But that is specific. What makes these things different is the type of that protein, the protein I call the antigen. Each, each one has a different one. And your body continuously has to be fighting every day. Recognizing and producing soldiers. Recognizing and producing soldiers. Now, if you have ever seen it before, within two days, the body will be flooded with soldiers, and that, that one has no... That is why like, many of you don't get sick from measles when, when you go around the child with measles, because your body has ever seen what? Measles. Mm -hmm. Now, vaccination works. I know of Asumba Abamu, you have been fighting vaccination. That is revealed knowledge. So vaccination works by us getting that protein before and making your body see it in a manner that it can make you sick. So that way if you come across that particular jam, within one to two days, your body has knocked it down. And you don't fall sick. That is how vaccination works. Now, when we had the SARS-1, they developed a vaccine, vaccines and things that will fight. That's the best way to protect you. Because after seven days, they will be sick. And then the body has big battle to fight. 
slightly failing people at the border, invaders at your border, or fighting them in the capital city. <laughs> Which one is easier? <laughs> at the border. You keep them out there. But if they have already come in and captured a few things and then now you are bringing soldiers, it is very difficult. That's what treatment usually does. So we want to prevent. So what happened is this virus, SARS CoV 2, changed that course, which we call the antigen. So now the soldiers that could be produced using the other vaccine, they, don't, they can be there, but they don't recognize it. This one can pass by because the gun can't kill it. Hmm. it can't kill it. So, uh, what, because of that, and this was global, all over the world, this is a new virus. Nobody already has soldiers. Nobody knows it. Whether you are who, whether you are president, whether you are who, nobody knows it. So the entire world population is, has no immunity. They have never seen it. That is the first thing. The second thing this virus did is that it changed from the first one, the SARS-CoV-1, by getting ability to grow both in the upper respiratory tract, your throat, and then later go to the lungs. Remember the other one I said it goes where? Yes. The lungs. So it was difficult to disseminate it to many people. This one is here first. So you start disseminating it even before you get sick. And then it grows deep and it will cause pneumonia. And usually infections which are just in the throat, they are mild. And after a while, after a week, you'll be okay. Now this particular virus has been able, it starts here. As you are finishing your one to two weeks, it goes to the lungs and gives you a pneumonia. Pneumonia is when you have infection of your lungs and fluids accumulate in the lungs. And that is why it kills people who cannot fight it off when it is so Could you help me? The first one would enter and go to the lungs. And go to the lungs. Okay. Mm. But this one comes in the... It road. comes through, it, these viruses enter through this, mostly, largely through these five holes. How many holes we have on our bodies? Because it is the five on the face, not the ear that much. Of course, if you insist and put your hand there and you take your mother, it could get a chance. The ears have a lot of words. But the eyes, the nose, and the mouth are the main ways. So when it enters, it will lodge in the throat. And you start to feel irritation in the throat, kind of sore throat, a dry cough. So it multiplies there. And that's a strategy for it to be able to mark to do what? To spread fast. I told you they are very clever, even though they don't seem to have brains, but they are very, very clever. They are also fearful and wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> the more we study them, the more you just have respect. In a very tiny, tiny bit, they can really design it. So it still has the ability to infect the lungs for people who cannot fight it off. If your immune system cannot fight it off and kill it here, when it is still here, then it will go to the lungs. And so you are spreading it very fast, but you are also getting so while it is in the throat, you spread? Yes. You spread it. You're coughing, you're sneezing, you're speaking as I'm speaking. That's why I'm, I keep a distance. So that if I have it, it doesn't get to you. <laughs> yes. The good thing is this. That still, it has not acquired the ability to just move in air. It comes out through 
droplets of saliva, mucus. So because of that, they come out heavy. So they drop near you. They drop near you. They have found that you. when you are preaching, you are really emphasizing the word. So you may project it further. <laughs> so if it had just acquired the ability to grow here, up here, in the human being, but this survive in the land, then it is be just a common cold, like the flu we have. But now this ability to go into the lungs and cause serious disease is what, one, it makes, when you get this virus, you take a, a minimum of three weeks to get rid of it. A minimum of three weeks. When, when, yes, when you are infected, yeah. yes, it's okay. That, that is when it is still here. Not just there. Mm. Even when it goes to the lungs, mm. for you to recover and be tested negative, a minimum of three weeks. Some people have gone to six weeks. Mm. Yeah, when they still have the virus, mm. so they can spread it. So it, it takes, when you get infected, whether you get seriously sick or not, <clears throat> because the majority of the people are able to keep it just here. If they are strong and uh, they are not suffering from any other thing, the immune system will fight. If you are exposed, within seven days, your body has figured out the configuration of this enemy and it starts to produce soldiers. Within three days, within three days, you start to produce those whose aim is to contain it there while the body is preparing. If that is very efficient, then you will not even feel any fever or anything. You will not know it has been there. That one we call it the net. I N N A or inbuilt the innate immune system. We we all have a system which is not specific, but just they have to alert. There's something wrong. Let's keep it here until the specifics figure out what it is. So they surround it. They that's what will cause that feeling of a lump eh? in the throat or oh, I'm getting sick. It it gathers mucus there to keep it there. Of course. As we, the body designs, the virus also designs how to escape. So if your body is successful and keeps it there, the immune system comes and it has not gone far. The other one, the specific one, for this in seven days begins to work and you clear. But you still be spreading. Yes, you be spreading. Actually, this virus is so clever that Two to three days before you even have that feeling of alarm or whatever, it is already spreading. So somebody, some people here might already be spreading. That is why you have to have your distance. Mm -hmm. By the time you start feeling a fever, because fever or rise of body temperature and that now seeing, you know pain is a friend. Eh? Many times, pain is a friend mm -hmm. because it's an alert system that there's something going wrong here. Mm -hmm. so we are so fearful and wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I praise you, my God, because I'm really. So, pain is a friend which alerts you, but that is usually at the time when the body has now produced the prototypes. You know, prototypes, eh? something you design, it's just okay. Mm -hmm to see whether it's going to work well before it must produce. When, by the, that is the time when you begin to feel a bit unwell. The body is starting to respond specifically. Yeah. So sometimes just those prototypes and the innate system of fear. And it has been seen that in 80% of individuals who are healthy, the young, Oh, 80%, 80%. 80%. Yeah, of people who get a, 
infected with this virus. And when it gets to a population, almost everybody is going to get infected because nobody has immunity. Yeah, and it has a very disefficient way, a very efficient way of dissemination. People interacting, you know. So it, it the 80% of the population will be able to clear it with just a mild illness, feeling ah, I can give tangawuzi, eh? Give me some tangawuzi, lemon, honey, a few things, and then the fever will go. You take maybe some panadol. There's a it keeps in uh, as more some people not even notice. Some people have a mild illness, but they will not need hospitalization. They can get over it. So 80 percent of the people have a mild uh, disease, but they still spread. Why we have advised the president to take the announcement that we have done? It is possible for people to be spreading the virus in the civil world. So because of that, it is not possible for us to assure you the virus is not going to They are not sick. Sorry. I keep, I keep, I teach a lot in Uganda, so sometimes I descend there, <laughs> although it's not my mother tongue. But I speak a lot because of the way I have been dealing with the pandemic. So, so when they will still, they will, people will come, and then you will know they are not sick. You think you are all okay, but they are spreading. But the time is going to come when the 20% of the severe disease begin coming down for those who have been exposed. Mm. Now I want us to appreciate this. How many are we here? Yeah, 41, according to registration with others. 20% of the food. 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 Eight people. Eight people. Mm. Mm -hmm. So let's imagine a number one and ten to eight of us fall sick severely. <coughs> what impact will that be? And then three of them die, or four of them die. <laughs> <laughs> and when I look at our age here, yeah. Mortality and severe illness would be about 80. But it can kill more people in Uganda than Ebola has ever done from there. In just one month, we can combine all the Ebolas and all the other epidemics if we do not act. It can kill more people in this country than Ebola has ever done. China has postponed the spread to other places because of the, they came down massively. You know, they still have that communist thing. Mm -hmm. And people are criticizing them. You will see. Mm -hmm. You will see what this country is. Now, you are going to see. Everybody will have to, do, to go through that ruthless. Ruthless. They will find it, but I must stop the virus. Mm -hmm. And I pray that we can control it. So this virus is moving. We have no specific tour. The malaria that we give them and malaria, later kaunga, we don't have. So when we say go to the hospital, it is to support your body until it builds up its immune system. Now, if you don't go to the hospital early, then the virus damages your body too much. No support can help. But despite good treatment, still a bank of a mobile phone. Even the best healthcare system. So our best, best weapon is to protect ourselves and prevent as many people as possible from getting this virus. I don't know if there is a question there because I'm moving away from the technical discussion of the disease. So, 
there a question about the virus and why it causes this yes? The rumors are circulating that there are some kind of blood groups that cannot be affected. Is it true? People are hearing what their ears want to do, what? Yeah. Where is the science? That's why we ask the science. We don't have enough information. Bloody groups are distributed. When you go to the Asians, they have they are predominantly certain blood groups. When you come to the Africans, they are predominantly all. When you go, yeah, so bloody groups, so that we call those um, confounders. They are just they have just happened to be. For example, people have been saying blacks don't get this disease. Where were the blacks exposed to the virus for us to make that conclusion? Mm -hmm. The disease is in Asia. There is one black here, two blacks there, and when they announce the disease, they are separated from everybody. So they are just not where the disease is. They are not there. I was looking around to see if there is a leak chart so that I could draw some. Since you are going to train me, you can get us from there. Because I want to explain it to you, today, eh? it is not very complicated. Even the science have said you don't have to communicate all of it, but it can help you think through how you build your summon. How you view you build the summon to preach to the people you are going to preach. If the yes please. Doctor, I'm just wondering that how does this dangerous disease come to the existence? Yes, she was explaining from animals. I know and people want to believe because they don't want to believe with the facts you tell them. They want to believe it is uh, manufactured. Yeah. Yes, that's what they want. But in the 1800, we had Spanish flu. We didn't have any developed technology. Nobody wants to manufacture something that will destroy the world. Because even the most developed countries need the market for their products. Well, that is why they give us aid. The colonialists were not interested in us necessarily, but we were labor. That's why they brought the hospitals and they gave the charge. So that they treat you so that you're strong enough. Because if you are dying with malaria, they will not have labor. So no country is interested in manufacturing something that will eradicate the rest of the world. Because then you will be greater than who? <laughs> in nature, we spend years studying these things. These dynamics are always taking place. Very sophisticated mechanisms. They are always taking place. That's why I told you that if you knew what I know, every day you wake up. In fact, for me, the most wonderful thing every day is to realize I'm still alive. So I wake up with a heart of worship that I have another day to minister to my king. I have another day to serve that kingdom because. So many things can kill you. <laughs> so many. But the Lord has manufactured us in the place of Satan. So just to, to go over for you, we have so many viruses. These viruses tend to stay with a particular species. But because as they multiply, they keep getting some errors. For example, you have a child, and the child may look like you, but people can't decide whether it is completely you or the mother. Mm -hmm. eh? Even your son or your, your daughter who looks like you does not exactly look like you. So those small changes give them new behaviors. And this is one of them. Every about 10 years, we have a threat of something like that. And thank God, there are millions of people searching out for these things every single hour in the world. You don't see them. They are not heroes. They are not given. Sometimes they are given medals after they have died. But they are out there searching, searching, monitoring all the time. 
So otherwise, so they detect them, some of them. But this one is totally, they, it had a change which made it very different from the other ones. So this means about chewers, about black people, melanin protecting them. Maybe let's wait until July, then we can see. Because it is this morning I saw the numbers on African continent, and I immediately jumped out of the Because we need to work. We need to work. You know, I saw the, number, the, the trend, the way it is going. It is now going to go like that. And most